Hello everyone, welcome to Utopedia World. This is Miss Chaz and we're going to discuss today about flowering plants. Many people are usually uh, interested in terms of flowers. Actually, even I, I like to see a lot of flowers because of their beautiful colors and beautiful structures. So now let's define what is flowering plants. Flowering plants are flower or plants with their productive organ. They play a vital role in pollination by attracting animals, birds, and other flies to transfer the pollen grains. Even using wind, flower can transfer the pollen grains. Later, we're going to discuss that. This is also called as angiosperms. Flowering plants have their characteristics. The first characteristic of this, these plants produce flowers, fruits, and seeds. Second, they can characterize by a root system and a shot system. They are the main producer. They produce the food that requirement of all living organisms involved in ecosystem. Reproduction in flowering plants is by Sexually, flowering plants make up nearly 90% of all plant species found in the biosphere. They are present from 130 million years on this biosphere. And the three largest family of flowering plants are the sunflower, orchid, and the pea families. One kind of flowering plants is desert flowering plants. When we say desert, are the home to many living things. Plants that grow in the desert have to be adapted to the dry conditions. They must be able to collect and store more water to reduce water loss. Desert plants look quite different to plants that grow in other places. The desert plant includes bushes, cacti, saguaro cactus, which have been adopted to survive in the extremely dry conditions. These plants are hard and have a capability to tolerate alkaline soils. Second consideration of flowering plants is the hardy flowering plants. When we say hardy flowering plants, they are defined as the seasonal plants or a plant which is adapted to the temperature, climate, and to certain area. Hardy flowering plants have the uh, ability to tolerate extreme cold, heat, wind, floods, and other geographic location, and so on. And we have uh, four kinds of hardy plants. We have the tender hardy, half hardy, and the winter hardy. First, we have the tender for hardy flowering plants. The tender plants are those plants which cannot survive in extreme cold temperature. And finally, the plants die. These include plants like annual herbs, corn, cucumber, eggplant, peanut, pumpkin, sweet potato, tomato, and watermelon. The second one, we have the half hardy. The term half hardy plants are used in cultivation to describe the beading plants, which are sown in heat in winter or early spring and planted outside after all danger of frost has passed. These plants require greenhouse and warm temperature. They include plants like Bicilizi and Pestinians and so on. The third one we have the hardy and uh, the hardy plants are those plants which can survive even in extreme cold temperature. Hence they can be shown outside and they do not require greenhouse. These include popular plants such as love in the mist, nasturtiums and so on. And last, we have the winter hardy for the hardy flowering plants. The winter hardy plants are those plants which grow only during winter. And those include plants like cabbage, broccoli, carrot, tulips, and prussia, and also a lot of more. 
Next flowering plants that we can consider is the hanging flowering plants. The hanging flowering plants can be defined as small evergreen shrubs which can be grown in baskets or in hanging pots and these types of flowering plants can also be planted on fence and patients and they are traditionally plants which are planted in between the months of April to early June and these plants are habituated to more heat and plenty of water. There are plenty of hanging flowering plants which includes like uh, most rose, lantana, fuchsia, verbena, and sweet alisium. And of course, we have a lot of hanging flowering plants too. Did you know the food we consume every day comes from the flowering plants itself? And another thing you need to know, flowering plants are the largest groups within the plant kingdom and there are around of 260,000 species of flowering plants and about 90% species are identified. In terms of flowering plants, we have two types based on physical structure. First is the monocotyledons. When we say this one or this kind, we have one seeded plant and the leaves of this kind or type have parallel veins. They are herbaceous plants. The part of the flowers of monocotyledons are arranged in three or more. It may contain flowers with three petals, flowers with six petals, and the stamens also follow this pattern. It also makes a seed with a seed coat. For example, of monocotyledons, around the world we have 70,000 species of this kind, included the grass, lilies, arises, orchids, and palms, grass, corn, rice, and even wood. The second type, we have the decotylendons. They are two seeded plants and the leaves of this kind or type have veins and network. Also, seeds of this kind also contain an embryonic plant and the flowers of decotylendons have petals and other part of flowers are arranged in four or five or six and it may contain flower with four petals, flowers with five petals, even flowers have six petals and the stomachs also follow this pattern. The seed of decotylendons is protected by seed coat. Decotylendons have around the world 180,000 species and it includes also as decots, roses, magnolias, cacti, and uh, daisies, and lupines, and most type of tree such as sunflower and rose. So as you can see, this is the summary. We have one cotylendon, two cotylendon. For the mono decot, we have pot and tree, and this is flower with four or five. Parallel, net like, pollen grain has one or or for the monocot, and for the cut we have here that has the three parts or furrows, and in case of vascular bundles throughout their stems, ground tissues, this one is the monocot, and this one we have the ring side for the decuts. So, what is inside of a flower? As you can see the image, we have here what we can see inside of a flower. The male sex organ on anterns and filaments surround the female sex. As you see organs, which is the ovary, and this one, you have the anter and stomach. And flower parts are arranged in rings from the outer petal to the inner ovary. And in terms of this one, the purpose of this kinds or this part of the flower is to encourage pollination so that seeds can be made. When we say pollination, that is the transfer of pollen from a male anther to a female stigma. And we have 
four types of pollination. We have the self, which is throughout the flower. The second one, we have the self also, which is interaction by two other flowers in one plant. And we have the crossed type and artificial type. In terms of artificial, some people transfer the specimen from the flower to the other flower that cannot be interrupted. In terms of pollination, it can be caused by animals such as bee, butterfly, or insect. And these animals, bee, butterfly, or insect, are commonly bring the nectar, which is this part of the flower attract pollinating animals and nectar is a sweet sugary liquid and animal feeds on the nectar and it picks up pollen and carries it to other flowers that it lands on. The second type of pollination is we have the wing pollination and pollination in some flowers are occurred by this process and animal pollinated flowers are strongly scattered and brightly colored but the flowers of wind pollinated plants such as grasses are often small and no petals. As you can see in the picture this is by wind pollination. By wind pollination and animal transferring the pollen as you can see in the picture comes into the pollen receptor. And when it comes to pollen receptor, it following to the pollen tube, antipodal cell, and up to the oval, and it going to the female sex cell, as you can see in this part, which is the ovum. And fertilization is going to process. And it produces seeds and fruits. And the seeds consist of a tiny embryo plant as food store for the embryo and a protective coat. And also, as the seeds of plants develop, the ovary surrounding the seeds develops into a fruit such as an apple or a pea pod. And fruits protect seeds and help to spear them away from the parent plant so that new plants have enough water and light to grow. After producing the fruits and seed germination is going to process. The first growth stage of embryo plant from seed is called this type, germination. And when there is enough sunlight and water, the seed germinates sprouts and the embryo plant starts to grow until it develops leaves and seeding or seedling depends on the seed's food store. So you can see in the image, we have the ovary containing a vol and it produces the fruit containing the seed, embryo, germinating seed, seedling, and it, a cycle process germination. Also this one, until it become a beautiful flower or important and especially for the plants. So thank you for listening to video world and thank you for watching. See you again and I hope you enjoy listening to my video.